Hello, and we are back with K line clear aligners. So, today we are going to talk about class 2 molar correction, which was considered very difficult even with conventional mechanics at times. There are two very simple ways of doing uh, class 2 correction. One, of course, is distalization, which is usually done after you create space distal to the upper molars. Since the aligner has a three-dimensional control on the crown of the teeth, it is easier to move these teeth back using the anchorage of the front teeth and then the molars can, once they are taken back, there will be space mesial to the molars and this can be followed by sequential distalization of premolars and canine. This is one of the simplest means, but we have to do IPR. IPR is in the tune of 0.6 uh, millimeters or 0.7 millimeters on the mesial or distal aspect uh, of the first molars or even sometimes the second molars. So depending on the number of teeth in the arch, you can make out that there is enough space created to distalize the teeth by 2 or 2.5 millimeters even. So it is relatively simple bodily movement, but it is restricted to 2 to 2.5 millimeters of distalization only. The other means that you would realize are using distalizers. And the one that K-Line recommends is the carrier distalizer. It is a very simple appliance, a rigid appliance and you will have one part which is bonded onto the first molar and the other part the rigid arm connecting the two parts the anterior arm is bonded onto the canine it is usually in the middle one third of the canine and you can run class 2 elastics from the lower molar uh, to distalize the upper teeth this is how it works you have a lower aligner with a molar tube or a lingual button on top once you have this you can actually generate distalizing forces on the first molar it is extremely efficient where you have a mesio palatal rotation of the first molar always remember the, the rigid part is has flexibility and it causes a rotational movement and a distalizing component onto the first molars. The clear carrier distalizer is now available. It is made of fiberglass and has very reasonable bond strength. The mechanism or principle remains the same. The class 2 elastic exerts a distal force onto the molar. This causes a distal buckle rotation of the first molar and eventual distalization of the teeth. This is the diagrammatic representation of how the molar goes back. It rotates and it, it is pivotal, pivoted on the palatal root of the maxillary first molar. Since it is a rigid appliance, the force component is generated by the class 2 elastics that are incorporated into the system. To illustrate this point, I will just show you one case. These are the pre-treatment photographs of a patient. You will have to excuse me because since this is not exactly my case and is from the library of k in Germany, these are class 2-ish canines. You can make out more, both the canines are in class 2 tendency and you have anterior crowding. So an ideal treatment would require distalization of the maxillary canines followed by alignment of the anteriors. This is the aligner in place. You can make out the lower aligner is in place with a C-shaped relief for the molar tube in this case. You can also use the less conspicuous clear buttons or even the metallic buttons. And this is the carrier digitalizer in place. You can make out there's a small hook here and a class 2 elastic will be run from here. So you can use the strength, adequate strength, depending on 
if you have the second molar you would require more force and if you have uh, no second molar then it is easier to digitalize the uh, maxillary molars this is at the end of correction you can make out the canine has come into a class one relationship you can on the right side also it's come out class one and you can very easily see that there is a space generated mesial to the canine the only thing that you need to be careful about is that there is always a tendency for the maxillary canine to slightly supra erupt because of the vertical component of the forces that are generated by the class 2 elastic so what are the precautions when we do this remember ipr is restricted to only corrections where you have 2 to 2.5 mm of true molar digitalization required and if you are using a carrier class 2 corrector it can be increased to 3.5 to 4 mm of correction the maxillary canine like i mentioned earlier has a tendency to supra erupt because of the vertical component of the class 2 forces so you have to keep a strong watch over it of course since it is a elastic based appliance system you will require the cooperation of the patient which is mandatory and the correction of class 2 also adds to the treatment duration and cost if you are using an aesthetic appliance like the fiberglass or the clear class 2 digitalizer from carrier it is relatively expensive as compared to the metal version but then we are talking about aesthetic appliances so the fiberglass one is majoritarily um, you know preferred by most of our patients this is all about class 2 correction using the k line clear aligners thank you very much for logging in and enjoy aligning using the k line clear aligners thank you